Hi, I'm Ellie Rothney um, and welcome to the Masterclass for Wildlife Photography at Home. I started photography when I was about eight years old and we all have an inspiration in our lives whether it's a, a friend or uh, someone in the family and for me like many of you I know um, it was my father um, now dad was a really really keen amateur photographer he he in a way preferred landscapes uh, to wildlife um, but it was him putting um, a camera in my hands at the age of eight um, and photographing hedgehogs on the lawn in the garden that just really really got me into um, photography it was just that initial inspiration um, and I've actually got one of his cameras here uh, to show you so this is the Canon AV1 um, and this was uh, what we used, um, it must have been the late 1970s with this camera. Uh, this is what we used to photograph those hedgehogs. Um, now, I did the usual thing, I went through school, I went to university. Um, my father was a, a geography lecturer, so we were always, always outdoors in, uh, in nature and walking the hills and the mountains. Um, and always taking photographs and for me they were just snapshots at the time but this is the camera that that I would borrow from from dad um, and it was his pride and joy this camera um, you know he was so protective of it so just to be able to hold the camera and take some photographs was was a really big thing for me at the time um, then when I finished uh, university, I did geography, by the way, as well, inspired by my dad. Um, I finished university and I went to Kenya. It was a lifelong dream and we're talking about the early 1990s here now. Um, and I really, really needed a camera. So dad lent me his AV1. Um, he lent me a 300mm lens, which was not much bigger than the one that you can see on here um, and off I went with this camera to Kenya for the first time um, shooting on film <laughs> as it was in those days wondering whether I got exposures and shutter speeds right or wrong I didn't really know you know um, I was making it up as I went along basically but um, just very very uh, good memories of, of that first trip and just getting one shot of a mother elephant being followed by a baby elephant um, with this camera was was something special for me to, to just get that shot. I then went into um, marketing. So for many years, I followed a marketing career, working for a number of um, uh, big companies, but I was always, always taking pictures, always. And I was traveling as well. I, I've always, always loved to travel. So wherever I went, um, the camera was with me. And even then it was still uh, this, it was the film camera. And it was probably about 14 years ago now that I became very serious about photography. And the turning point was when I bought my 500 mil lens. And uh, I think then it was the 300D, so the world had just turned digital. And that was the turning point where I started to get very serious about what I was doing and focusing a lot more on wildlife pictures rather than just, you know, architecture, scenery, travel type shots. Within the last sort of eight or nine years, I've been guiding and I turned into a, a full-time professional. So the guiding has, has uh, been fantastic in terms of uh, still giving me the ability to travel and also meeting lots of people, instructing people about how to take better pictures and actually just being outdoors with nature, doing what I love.
So in today's masterclass, we're going to focus on uh, woodland birds. And I'm going to take you to um, a, a homemade feeding station that I've made just for you. And we're going to uh, have a look at how to get the best pictures of birds. I'm going to go through some techniques. I'm going to be going through shutter speeds, ISO, aperture, um, and uh, how I position the feeding station and the pop-up hide. Today we're going to be focusing on um, bird photography. And so the kit in my bag for today is specifically for, for birds. So the main camera I'm going to be using today for the shoot is the Canon 1DX3. It's got a superb autofocus system um, and its ISO capabilities, um, certainly at high ISO, uh, are spectacular. So when we've got a situation where we've got quite a dull day, which we might do later today, it just means that I can really dial in a very, very high ISO and still get uh, high shutter speeds and, and sharp shots of those little woodland birds. So that's the camera body, the main camera body that I'm going to be using today. Um, paired with that um, is this beautiful lens. This is the Canon 500mm. Now this is the lens that I use every day, pretty much all day, for small birds, large birds, for mammals. I absolutely adore the 500mm. And when you pair it onto a, a pro camera like the, the 1DX series, it's, it's a, a partnership made in heaven. It's a very, very beautiful lens. Um, so on the whole today, I'm gonna be using this. It's very quick. Um, I can take this down to f4, which means I can let a lot more light in uh, uh, into the camera um, and uh, yeah it's uh, super so that's the main lens. The other lens that I will have in my bag just as a, a backup for bird photography is the Canon 300mm. This is the f2.8 again so I can really open up those apertures um, which is fantastic for wildlife photography. Very, very fast lens again um, and yeah a little bit light and a little bit smaller than the 500 and I always, always carry um, a second camera body with me, just as a backup. Um, and my camera body is the Canon 5D Mark IV. Um, on the whole, I use this camera mainly for wildlife portraits and for uh, macro photography. Um, but even on a shoot like today with, with woodland birds, um, it's just great to have a backup in your bag just in case. And last but not least in terms of the camera kit is the Canon 1.4 extender. Um, and again, uh, so this is the Mark III. This will go on a 300mm or a 500mm and it's just a fantastic uh, piece of kit if you just want to get that little bit of extra reach um, on, on, a, on a very small bird. Okay, um, and then um, Standard really, so uh, we've just got lens covers. Um, these are pretty good, I use these all the time. Um, they're um, sort of a plastic inside, they're a cotton outside. They go over your uh, telephoto lens and over your camera, protect against wind, rain, snow, sand if you're on the beach. They're just, just fantastic. Um, just to have as a, a, an extra bit of kit just to give everything protection. Um, and then also just as uh, some smaller things. Um, oh yes, I always carry spare batteries, uh, lots of memory cards. Um, and I always take one of these around. So this is from a a uh, well-known uh, bike shop um, and this is just for tightening up your uh, tripod head or any nuts on your tripod um, and great for traveling you can see the whole thing just folds down and, and um, fits into your either your camera bag or your suitcase if you're going overseas so just a great little bit of kit that, that's always in there um, bizarrely i always carry carabiners with me um, certainly if there are some uh, uh, you're, you're working in places like Africa or even Gibraltar and you've got some uh, naughty little <laughs> uh, macaques around. They're really, really good for just uh, anchoring up your, your camera bag uh, up the zips. But I always carry this because you just don't know when you need this sort of thing. 
Um, and that's it. That's everything really that we're going to have on the, on the shoot with us today. This is a really basic uh, feeding station that I set up literally one week ago. Um, so it, it just shows what you can do in a very short space of time with, with woodland birds that are coming into your garden. Um, and there are just a few important factors that I just wanted to talk through with you about why I positioned it here. Um, the first thing is that uh, just to the left of me we've got some woodland um, and this is the, the main habitat for the birds that we're going to be photographing um, and the station isn't that far from, from the trees themselves. Now the reason for this is that these birds will uh, feel safe in, in those trees, in that woodland, they'll come out to this feeding station to feed and then they'll literally go straight back into the trees again. And that's a really important factor that if I'd put this hide in the middle of a, a big field somewhere, um, I wouldn't have had such a success rate with, with attracting the birds to the feeder. That's the first point to consider is just where you position. Just give the, the birds um, a safety net that they can fly straight into um, and, and they'll feel much happier this way. Um, the second thing I did um, is then looked at the position of where uh, I, I'm standing now in terms of where the light is throughout the day. So I was following the light in this certain spot um, you know, right at dawn, midday through to the evening and watching um, during the winter months where the, the sun is tracking. Um, and for example, if I just situated this just a little bit further up, up uh, that way, um, again near the trees, it would have been in complete shade. Whereas you can see now we've got a winter sun and it's creating some really beautiful light. The third thing to consider is uh, your backgrounds and what I've done again is um, I've looked at the backgrounds here and I've situated this against some lovely uh, catkins um, and when you're taking those still shots it's picking up the most beautiful colour at the moment with the catkins. So three key, key things to consider to start. Uh, situate it near a hedge um, or some trees, watch where the light is tracking during the day and think clearly about your background so it creates a really nice backdrop to the images that you're going to be taking. Um, right, very very simple, so as I suggested uh, these are some old, really old logs covered in moss that I've found in, in the woods, really rotting. Um, I've just put them on uh, my dad's old workmate just for stability. The beauty with using the workmate as well was I was able to just put this uh, tree uh, post in here and uh, I've drilled some holes in the back of here that I've pushed suet and peanuts into this. Uh, this is really good food for uh, bird species like the great spotted woodpecker, the jay, the long-tailed tits. They love coming onto this perch here and moving up and down and taking that suet and, and those nuts. What I've also then done is I've actually screwed this um, uh, perch onto the back here um, and you know there's nothing wrong with just using a piece of wood that you have but what I wanted to do was just take something that's very seasonal and this is why I just found this small branch with with these beautiful pink catkins on here um, because again you know um, bird species like the long-tailed tit, the blue tit um, and the coal tit, the grey tit are all using this at the moment as a perch so they're flying in from the the trees just here landing on the perch 
much. They're then taking a look down at the log, which I'm uh, placing the food along the log, um, and then they're literally taking the food and going straight back to the safety of the trees. Um, the last factor um, about feeding um, is I've just put some very makeshift bird feeders up here as well. Um, so in this bird feeder we've got um, an assortment of seeds, uh, peanuts, suet pellets uh, in here um, and in this one it's, it's pure uh, peanuts um, and it's just to attract a, a variety of different species to your feeding station. Um, simple, that's it. So um, this is a perch that I was using just literally over the weekend. Again, catkins, um, and I'd screwed this on the back here. Um, and I was taking some beautiful shots in the snow, which you'll be able to see. Um, and then I found this one with the, you know, a different colour. So this is the one that we'll work with today for the for the masterclass. Um, and um, what we then do is we're just going to. Uh, put down some food onto our log now um, just to attract the birds down here. So I've got a mixture again of the seed, the suet and uh, the peanuts. Um, so I'm just going to put them in little areas like this um, and when we're photographing this bird food is actually hidden by the moss in front of it so you, you shouldn't be able to see uh, these peanuts and the suet and I put a little bit just in here like this and some along here like that there we go I'm just going to check yeah I'm just going to pop a peanut in one of the holes here we've still got some suet in here um, and I saw the great spotted woodpecker going up and down this uh, this branch earlier this morning so uh, there we go. So the great thing about a feeding station like this is it's so simple to do and it's so basic you know it's just using materials that you've got around uh, uh, in your garden or you know when you go um, and have a have a, a, sh a short walk so um, this can be uh, set up you know just on your garden lawn um, using the same principles of just use a hedge for safety look where your sun's shining um, and just look at your backgrounds um, but so so simple to do uh, in your garden and literally um, you can't see this on camera but my house is just there anyway so uh, I've literally just moved this station into the field rather than uh, just having it in in my uh, back garden. Let's go and do some photography. I'm going to show you uh, the pop-up hide, another important thing to perhaps think about just to keep yourself hidden. Before we go what I do is I just take away um, uh, the bird feeders because uh, now the birds are used to coming here feeding on the feeders taking the food from the log and now I just want to encourage them uh, to go onto the log and not onto the feeders so I just take these away for an hour or two that's it and then I put them back So what I've also done is I've just used a pop-up hide and this is fantastic if you just need to conceal yourself from, from uh, the birds. Now some of the species that you get in your garden are probably quite used to seeing you um, and you'd be fine just concealing yourself behind a tree or next to a hedge or something like this. Um, but if you want to sit there for quite uh, a long time and certainly if you want to photograph uh, species like uh, jay and great spotted woodpecker um, then uh, one of these pop-up hides is, is just ideal so easy to uh, 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 sort of stake down you know put up it takes two minutes and I've, I've literally situated this about 20 meters or so from the perch now the way I did this was I 
just took some test shots of the, the perch with a 500mm lens and then also with the 500mm with the 1.4 converter because I was just testing uh, the backgrounds and I was also testing my position in respect to, to the perch and just making sure I had all those distances um, right and that I was happy with them. And then I literally put the hide up. That was it. So I've just put the 1DX3 onto live view so that I can show you the composition of the shot. Um, and here you can see the perch. Um, you can't see the food behind the moss um, and you can see the lovely bokka on that background um, of the trees. And really now it's a case of we just sit here and we wait, we're patient. So in terms of settings, um, I've set this camera to an ISO of 2500. I work on the whole in uh, aperture priority um, or AV, which you might see on your camera. Um, and the reason I work with aperture priority um, is uh, twofold. Um, the first is that generally my style of shooting is with a very, very wide aperture. Um, and what this does um, is it A lets more light um, into the camera to hit your sensor which means that you can work generally with slightly lower ISOs um, and still retain a very fast shutter speed. Um, and the second thing that working with a wide aperture does is it really blows out that background and gives that fantastic bokeh. And what happens when we have a bird or indeed a mammal, um, that subject will, will really uh, pop in, in that setting. So at the moment my settings are an ISO of 2500, an aperture of f5.6, um, and I tend to dial in um, a much faster shutter speed and I'm looking at a minimum of uh, 1 1,600th of a second, um, even taking that up to 1 2,000th or 1 2,500. So that's, that's very, very fast. And the reason I do this is with the very small birds, you know, like your blue tits and your nut hatches and so on, um, they, they're, very, they're just very fast moving. Even when they're on this perch, they're, they're generally moving around very quickly. Um, and clearly, um, you know, I'm wanting to capture a sharp shot of, of that bird, so that, that small bird. So I'm working on very fast shutter speeds with that. Um, and as I say, I'm keeping the aperture as wide open as I can to let in all that lovely light. Um, and then I'm managing my shutter speed by either increasing or decreasing the ISO. When I'm taking um, shots of much larger birds, um, you can afford slower shutter speeds. Um, and certainly when those larger birds are, are flying, um, you know, they're, they're much less erratic. You can track them far more easily. And, um, you know, so you can, for example, pan that shot where you, you're following the lens with the bird. Um, and you can get away with, with um, slower shutter speeds uh, for that. I just want to show you the, the second part that um, I've set up for you and this is the, the perch with the, the pink catkins on it just to show you how beautiful this looks um, against the, the background of, of those trees um, and it's basically just a case of sitting here and uh, waiting for the birds to show up. So if it's not possible in your garden to um, put up a pop-up hide, um, you can still just get down low. Just keep yourself eye level with those perches that you've built um, and at that distance. And just 
stay in position, keep calm, um, don't move, don't make a noise, um, and you might find that the bird still will come to, to your feeder. So at the moment we've got a group of long-tailed tits um, and they're basically casing the joint. They're flying all the way around the trees um, and over the perch at the moment and I expect they're going to come in. Um, the settings that I'm using for, for these birds, they're very, very quick. So I'm on a, a shutter speed of 1 uh, 2500th, um, f5.6 and an ISO of 3200 um, and I'm just waiting. They, they'll come down and they'll come for the suet um, and they'll come for the peanuts um, and uh, yeah, they're a beautiful bird. Oh, right, hang on, they're here, they're here. So this is a really good spot to photograph the jay um, and out of all the, the woodland birds that we get in our gardens, the jay is the one that I've been so pleased to photograph uh, since I set this perch up. They're very, very jumpy, um, so just the slightest movement and generally they, they, they'll fly. Um, so I've been getting some super shots of, of jays on this perch, even three at the same time. Um, and if there's one bird that I'm really, really pleased about being able to capture, it's, it's the jay. Another thing to mention is if you can learn the calls of the birds, it really, really helps. So, uh, for example, whether you're in your pop-up hide, uh, in the garden or in a field or you're walking through the woods and you can hear those birds calling, you know what you've got and you can just stop and listen to that. And you know, for example, there's a jay in the vicinity or there's a great uh, spotted woodpecker nearby and you can just stop and wait. And often, you know, that bird, you, you'll have a, a fleeting glance of that bird and, you know, you might get a lovely a flight shot of a woodpecker flying through the trees. So um, that's another little tip really, is, is just learn your bird calls and uh, keep watching those birds, learn about their behaviours um, and you should really enjoy the experience of photographing woodland birds. So it's always worth going for a walk with your camera too and um, on the 1DX3 I've just popped the 300mm on here, the Canon 300. Um, it's much lighter <laughs> to actually carry than the 500 and, and just gives you a little bit more agility. So it's always just worth walking the borders of the trees or if you've got any woodland or even a park. Um, and just seeing what you can take. Um, the backgrounds might be a little bit messier unless you're very, very lucky. Um, but you know, you're really able to capture those species in, in their habitat. Watch your ISO. Uh, so you really want to keep your uh, shutter speeds fast, as we talked about, um, you know, between the one sixteen hundredth to the one uh, two and a half thousandth. 
Um, so just manage that with um, your eye so and uh, because you've got a canopy uh, in the woods you might just need to uh, push that eye so it's just something to to keep a, a watch of um, and uh, yeah have fun um, and see what birds you can uh, find as you go on your uh, woodland walk so to summarize our masterclass about um, photographing close to home um, with the uh, woodland birds, um, look at uh, building your perch and where to site this. Um, so look at where the light is falling, look at your backgrounds to get those lovely clean backgrounds um, and put down a variety of food on your perch to um, attract a wide range of birds to, to your feeding station. Think about uh, peanuts, mixed seed, niger seed um, and suet um, and you should really be able to attract um, uh, whatever birds that you have in, in your neighbourhood um, and uh, yeah just uh, have fun with this. Look at concealing yourself so if you can put up something like a pop-up hide or even uh, some web netting or something like this just to hide yourself um, and uh, be patient, be persistent, um, do protect nature and wildlife so uh, never harm anything in this process um, and just have fun with the whole journey. You know, um, keep photographing those birds every day in different lights and different weather conditions. Um, change your perches around so that you're always getting a, a different type of shot. Um, and you might just become a lot more um, experimental with your perches as well as, as you go through this uh, learning process. Um, so uh, do have fun. <laughs>